Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty expanse. Praise Him for His mighty deeds, according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the trumpet. Praise Him with the heart and life. Praise Him with tinkle and dance. Praise Him with strings and instruments and life. Praise Him with loud symbols and with resounding symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
might know the words to that song, I'm pretty famous. Been around for a few years. 3,000 years. It's one of the oldest songs in the history of the world. Psalm 150. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let's try it together. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Now, you know why we're here today? Praise the Lord. We're to here today because what happened? Actually, oh, actually. Praise the Lord. We're here today because many, many years ago there was a great move of God called the Jesus Movement. And God was touching burned out hippies and transforming their lives. I'm one of them. Some people, it kind of burned out after a while, but it says in Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. This guy tasted and saw that the Lord was good. Nothing compares to the sweetness of Christ. So we're here today to lift up the name of Jesus. I want you to help us start this next song with these two instruments like this. Route 1. 
You all know Route 1, right? The highway that goes up the coast. Start in Key West. <laughs> Start in Key West at mile zero and follow it to the other end. It's fresher in the top. <laughs> when you get to the other end of Route 1, you are nowhere close to where we live. You gotta get off in the middle of the woods of Maine, head straight out into the middle of nowhere, that's New Brunswick, <laughs> go clear through the middle of nowhere till you get to the end of the world, Nova Scotia, <laughs> and now you're getting close. Cross nine miles of ocean by water, bridge, or plane, and you will come to what did I say? No, no. Just swim it, okay? Not, not now, you can walk across. Cross nine miles of ocean, and you'll come to the fairest land is possible to see. But don't stop there. That's just the beginning of the woes. We're on the other side of North Shore of Prince Edward Island, right where Anne of Green Gables is. Has anybody heard of Anne of Green Gables? Yeah, well, that's right where we live. It's, it's just like the movies, only quite a bit colder. <laughs> There's really no way you can convey the atmosphere watching Anne of Green Gables in the comfort of your living room, watching the snowy scenes in Anne of Green Gables, compared to actually being there and subtracting about 100 degrees. You know, it's like, it's very fresh there, isn't it? It's very yeah. fresh. So I would actually call it fierce. So we're, we're, we're glad to be here, even though to us this feels like the dead of winter now. But as uh, was mentioned, we just spent two months in uh, Florida. And the morning came. before yesterday, Friday morning, we woke up in Orlando. <coughs> yesterday morning, we woke up outside of Winchester, Virginia. And this morning, we were setting up for the concert. Here. Yes, we don't let much moss grow on us. <laughs> So anyway, we did literally start at mile zero in Key West, and we are going all the way to the other end, and heading back to Prince Edward Island in about a week or two, which is just getting to the middle of winter there. And I mean, winter like you have never experienced. <laughs> this song reflects the music and the dance and the culture of our lovely little island province. Prince Edward. Oh, I like that. I know. <laughs> it's called Facing the Gale. Tourism PEI actually sent us a nice little bill for this. <laughs> we weren't encouraging tourism very well.
We just finished a number of uh, St. Patrick's Day celebrations down in Florida. In fact, for two years in a row, we were featured at Fort Lauderdale St. Patrick's Day celebration, which was pretty amazing. What an opportunity to share the gospel. But uh, we have uh, been kind of clearing up a few misunderstandings about Brother Patrick and surprising a few people. First off, St. Patrick was an Irish. He was Roman. The Roman conquest was taking over the British Isles and Patrick was born to Roman parents, so he was a Roman citizen. Then when he was tending sheep, he was captured by the filthy Celts. <laughs> <laughs> Taken captive and turned, made a slave, and so he was a slave in Ireland for a number of years where he learned the culture and the language, eventually escaping and then when he was 30 years old, remember, the Roman Empire had become Christian under Constantine, and he went back to Ireland in order to introduce Christianity to the pagan Celts. And he was largely successful. And he, to the, the Shamrock, which had become almost uh, in this, uh, nobody really remembers what the shamrock is about, but the shamrock was used by St. Patrick to demonstrate the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in one three-leaved uh, plant. And so he used that illustration. He was very successful in helping people understand the Trinity. And Ireland largely became Christian, and so it is through the work of St. Patrick that we could be here today having Celtic revival. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Because the Celtic tribes became Christians. Isn't that amazing? I just think it's great. So, and then, uh, then also a little known fact is that it was also a dry holiday until like 1970. Absolutely no <laughs> drinking. There was no drinking at all. St. Patrick's Day for 1,700 years. Just a little side note, in case you want to observe it next year. <laughs> so here's another really neat illustration, and that is the apple blossom also tells a wonderful story. The apple blossoms, which will be coming out here in about a month or so, are snowy, snowy white, brilliant against the, the backdrop of the dreary, dreariness of winter. And it's such an amazing symbol of the whiteness that Christ imparts to us in the midst of this world that is becoming more and more gross, more and more filthy. But that brilliant whiteness <coughs> comes from Christ. And this little white bow uh, blossom starts as a bud, blood red bud. And this blood red bud symbolizes Jesus' blood turning into snowy whiteness. All who would come to him. So this is part of the great news of the gospel that we can be made white as snow. This song is called Blossom.
song is called You, and it's all about Jesus. You see, we can spend our lives pursuing so many things and find ourselves just as empty as when we started, or more so. We need to know that Jesus is the lover of our soul. He is the only one who can fill out that void that's inside of all of us. We all feel that huge empty spot inside of us. And it's meant to be filled with Jesus. And so, as I sing this song, um, we've just chosen a few different scenarios, but I hope the chorus will be for everybody. I hope it's a blessing to you. And uh, so we lost a member. Oh, he's regained. He's regained it, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
go with those songs, if you want to just get on our website, just type in Skype and Glee will come right up. And the video for that song is called You. I think you'll really enjoy it. And the last song was Blossom. And you'll get a good look at our backyard in that uh, video. And of course, once you look at that, you'll all be wanting to come and visit us. <laughs> so we prepared a, a little medley here of songs that you're going to hear when you get to Prince Edward Island to visit us. And these are some of the traditional island favorites. this next song on five. <laughs>
take a minute to introduce the Sky family. We are, in fact, a family, hence the name. And we are actually, we are actually completely unrelated. <laughs> you know, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say, we are the results, we are the product of a homeschool family that's gone terribly wrong. <laughs> because homeschool families are innately musical, and I don't know why that is, but they are. But if you live in the Northeast, you play classical, and all the kids, bing, 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 and bing, play violin. Yep. If you live in the Midwest or any place other than New England, they play bluegrass. Well, our problem is, we live so far from the road, we never got the memo. <laughs> we instinctively picked up the right instruments. We just started wailing away, and this is what happened. And so, really, over the course of the last few years, we've been corrupting homeschool families from coast to coast. <laughs> because when they hear this, like, Oh, can we do that? Can we do that? <laughs> yeah, so we have really have corrupted. So I apologize if there's any homeschool families here because we might have disrupted your train. <laughs> so when we finished homeschooling, which took just a little bit over 200 years, I thought that was quick. Four out of five of my kids went together with me to play music, dance, and share the gospel. This is my oldest son, Seth, playing the bass guitar. <laughs> gets a little overwhelming and well I start to feel bad for the rest of my family <laughs> you know I mean sure they're great at their instruments unfortunately they didn't pick the bass <laughs> so on behalf of all of us bass players thanks for the applause <laughs> playing the basketball the fiddle the boot the piano singing and dancing is my son Joel My lead dancer, my son, Gabriel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you just, you just kind of have to live a moment with me. See, uh, I made mean, lead dancer status. Lead dancer, yeah, that's right. But uh, really what happened is my sister had a baby. And so that was okay for a while. She, you know, and then she started to recover from that. And now she's pregnant again. And so, I'm like the only one dancing right now. <laughs> Notwithstanding, lead dancer status. <laughs> 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 the big championship so I thought, oh no, they're really living up as long as I got it, you know? Oh yeah, that's the cherry in your position there. <laughs> yeah. And of course, what you really want to know is who's the good looking one. So I'd like to proudly introduce our new our drummer, Daniel. <laughs> Our drummer, Daniel. Our now, Daniel is from the middle of nowhere. Do you remember where that is? New Brunswick? Yeah, that's where he's from. And uh, now he's changed his residence to Prince Edward Island because of an event that took place a couple years ago. And that is, he married his daughter, Miriam. That's it. And I'd like to introduce uh, Sarah. Where is Sarah? She's... Come on, Drew. Uh, Daniel is exhibit A of the power of the gospel. He is a radically changed person. Amen. Exhibit B, power of the gospel. Sarah from Connecticut. And this is B, I mean Elijah. Yeah, the complicator of touring. Yeah. He's married to my son, Joel. Ty Sophia from Pennsylvania, the one who started this whole idea. Join the band, marry a band member, and then complicate things. This is my cup, and hope is Susie, I guess, right? And this is 
Uh, this is Jasmine from Alberta. You don't know where in the world that is. It's in uh, Western Canada. She's with us helping us out. She's a real blessing. And this is Abigail, the daughter of Miriam and Daniel the German. Amen. Then we have a surprise guest with us tonight because I've watched in woe and trembling and dread as each of my children married a wonderful person, except for my oldest son, Seth. Well, guess what? Today, we have with us the engaged Anna. <laughs> I'd like the group of your family to stand up. They're the ones responsible for these two beautiful girls. So Sarah's going to help us with the door prize now. These are well and newly scrambled. Yeah. Okay. Because it would be deceitful if 
we didn't reveal the truth. Okay. We have come here under the guise of being a Celtic fiddle man. But the truth is, we're a Russian jazz band. <laughs> Pretending to be a Celtic fiddle band, deceiving people from coast to coast, but really being a Russian jazz band. And that's because we're doing a song now to celebrate our Irish-Russian roots. There's always two sides, isn't there? Irish-Russian. So we're going to do a song now to celebrate the motherland. <laughs> A song we call The Cossack. It makes me cry. <laughs> We gave this part to Andre Ryu, but he's still working on it.
we did not tamper with the elections. <laughs> subjects heaven's a real place heaven is a real place it's a physical material world like here only glorified if we could see the glory of heaven we would make sure we did everything it would take for us to lay it there the Bible says the eye has not seen the ear has not heard nor has it entered the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him I'm going to tell you what happened to me? I told you before that I was a burnt out hippie and God's grace was poured out in the Jesus movement where he was taking all of us burnouts, filling us with the spirit of God and giving us new lives. So my story was that I heard about the hippie movement. I had seen enough hatred and rejection by the time I was through high school to be done with it. If there was peace and love somewhere in the planet, I wanted to be in the middle of it. Being a man of action, I bought a 63 Chevy Nova <laughs> and drove to the mothership of hippies. Hey, Ashbury, San Francisco. I was there, yes, I had flowers in my hair. I know it sounds weird now, but we were all doing it. And I wanted to be in the middle of the peace and the love. I wanted to be in the middle of the scene. I wanted to see Jefferson Airplane and Grateful Dead, Country Joe and the Fish. This is when Jimi Hendrix was alive. Like, I gotta talk to people who are in their 70s to know that no even live. You know what I'm saying? And when I get, get out to San Francisco, the same week I got to San Francisco to be in the middle of the scene, the same week there was a little poorly published shindig going on in the East Coast. 69 Woodstock. It was like a few hours from where I lived. <laughs> All of my friends were there. Not me, I was in the scene. <laughs> so that's kind of a little disappointing. But I got to see this hippie movement up real close, up close and personal. I got to see what it was really about. And it did not take me very long to figure out that it was bankrupt. And there was no peace, there was no love, there was nothing. Every man for himself, just like every place else. I was disgusted. I was let down. It was a black scene. And it didn't take me long before I decided to go back to the East Coast because I was disgusted by what I saw. So I did, and that's, I made my way back, which was another story that would take too long, but that was pretty eventful. When I got back to the East Coast, I went uh, back to life as usual, playing lead guitar in the clubs for our favorite motorcycle gangs. <laughs> Until one day, something remarkable happened. I walked into the men's room of the school I was going to, Quinnipiac. I went to Quinnipiac where it was modular trailers and fields. <laughs> And I went into the men's room, and laying in the men's room was a little pamphlet. They explained how to meet God. And I says, whoa, you can meet God far out. <laughs> so I took this thing up, and I took it home. And I read through it and explained how to have a new life in Jesus. And man, I was done with my old life. And it talked about finding peace and love in Christ. 
So I read through this book. I immediately wanted to do what it said, but I couldn't do it without my best bud who had been in San Francisco with me. So I drove over to his house, knocked at his door. Jeff! Now Jeff was a motorcycle dude. Yeah. We need to have a new life in Christ. What? <laughs> Nothing could really have prepared him for that statement. <laughs> we need to get born again. Now he thinks I'm really crazy. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> so we sat down together and we read through this book. Bible verses were in it. Never had met a Christian. Didn't know anything about the Bible. Never saw a Bible verse. And when I read the Bible verses, I was so awestruck that God knows us, cares about us, concerned about us, knows every intimate detail of our lives, and wants to help us. So when we got to the end of this book, I talked to my friend. Now his life was as empty with his Harley as mine was with my music. So when we got to the end, I said, Jeff, we should get born again. He said, okay. <laughs> so we got down on our abuse and we read prayer. We read the, the prayer. We didn't know how to pray. We didn't know anything about anything. And God so honored our reaching out to him. We asked him to forgive us and to clean us and make us clean. Make us his children and to receive us into his kingdom. And I'll tell you the truth. What we experienced was like being hugged by God. Nothing we had ever done could come close to the awesomeness of being hugged by God. I found the peace and the love I was looking for it was in Jesus. And things follow grace, you know, it can be a real adventure. But through all of the difficulty, all the trials, I've never once doubted that when I die, I'm with him. If you don't know what I'm talking about, take one of these on your way out the door, they're on the table. Read it, do what it says. You'll be real glad you did. Here's a song called, Who is Like Him? About the beauty of heaven.
many people go to this church? How many people go to other churches? Well, today, as we all know, we celebrated Palm Sunday. And as we get into this Holy Week, culminating with Resurrection Sunday, a few things take place in between. The Last Supper, where Jesus pours out the cup and he hands it to his disciples and he says, Behold, the blood of the new covenant. He instituted the new covenant at the Last Supper. This is, this bread is my body, take and eat. This wine is my blood, take and drink. It is my blood shed for you for the new covenant. Almost many people do not really understand what the new covenant looks like. The new covenant is so exciting. It does things the old covenant couldn't do. The old covenant was about outward observance. Going to temple. Today, going to church. In the old days, before Jesus, they would come, they would offer sacrifice, they would leave, and they would be roughly the same people they were coming and going. Because the Old Testament didn't have the power to change lives. And then Jesus comes, he institutes the new covenant. In the new covenant, it's not about outward form or observances. We have lots of different churches, don't we? We all have different practices and different ways that we worship. We minister in many churches and we find wonderful people everywhere. But the new covenant is not about outward worship, outward service, or attending church. The new covenant is having the word of the Lord written on the tablet of our heart so that we are made into new creatures in Christ. Amen. This is what the new covenant is. So therefore, if we have an outward observance, but our life is the same as everybody else. We have not yet entered into that glorious new covenant. The new covenant is that Jesus writes the law on the tablet of our heart so that the things of God become desirable and beautiful. They become the thing we want more than anything. It be, we long to walk after God because we love him and we love his ways. So the evidence of entering the new covenant is that we receive a new life through faith in Jesus. So let me just explain that a little bit more clearly. Excuse me. I guess 27 hour drive from Key West to here did not really fare that well on my body. <laughs> we all know that Jesus came and he died for us. We're all pretty much aware that he paid the price so that we could be forgiven. So let's just say that we have committed the sin of murder and we're about to go to death row, and suddenly a wonderful man comes up and steps in and says, I'll go to, to the execution in your place. 
And through that act, the one who was going to be executed is let free. Somebody had to die because the law was broken. And if there was no penalty, then there would be no law. So someone had to take the Son of God, took the full penalty for our sins, everything we've ever done. Many people understand that through Christ, through faith in Christ, we can be absolutely, utterly forgiven. Through humility, through repentance, the way of restoration to God biblically is that we would humble ourselves and pray. We would humble ourselves and say, Lord, I'm, I need you. I need forgiveness for my sins. I knew I did. And when I came to the Lord on his terms and I humbled myself, I received his forgiveness. That's what it meant when I said I felt like I was hugged by God. I received his forgiveness. But that's only one part of salvation of the new covenant. The first is that we are forgiven. And the second is that we are changed. That we are given a new life in Christ. The word of God says if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. And this gives us such hope. It means we have no bondage to our old life. Do you have a predisposition towards sin? Yeah, you probably do. If you say you don't, you have a predisposition toward lying. <laughs> we have stubborn sins. We have a way of life that has ignored God for many years. We have things that we can't get out of or we don't want to get out of. We owe no debt whatsoever to our past. We have a clean break with our genetic code. You know, we have a, there's many people, sons and daughters of alcoholics, and there's genetically predisposed toward drink. Well, guess what? Through the new covenant, our DNA is changed. We are given the DNA of Jesus so that we will grow into the image of our master. So ours is to apply the salvation that the Lord has provided. Ours is to apply it. We come to the Lord in humility, we receive his forgiveness. Then we come to the Lord in humility and we receive his new life. Do you have trouble with your tongue speaking evil of people? The Lord can't deliver you from that. If you have a grudge against someone who offended you 35 years ago, God can deal with it, and he must. Because remember the Lord's Prayer, that he forgives us as we forgive others. That means if we don't forgive others, that's the suicide prayer. So we got to do inventory. we got to come to the Lord in humility. we got to open our heart. Just say, Lord, what's in here that's displeasing to you? that's not conformed, that's not new covenant. Because he wants us to become brand new people that love the things that are good, that love the things that are right. You struggle with all the things you see on the internet. You struggle with all the wickedness that's online. Well, let me give you some encouragement. Before these beautiful young women came along, and this beautiful young man over here. We're a, we're a house of four single guys. And the word of the Lord says in the Sermon on the Mount that if we so much as look at someone with lust, we have committed adultery. All right, so bring that into a house with four single guys. And you can say, oh, well, that's impossible. No, it is not impossible. The Lord said it, the Lord meant it, then he died for us, then he gave us the new covenant so that our life can change. And we must deal with the things that are going on inside of us that we think nobody else knows about, everybody does. 
We need to deal with them. We come before the Lord in humility. So this is what we did. Four guys, we made a covenant that we would pray and, and repent every time we saw something we shouldn't have. If you want to increase your prayer life, that's a good way to start. <laughs> but the beauty of God is, if you stumble a thousand times in a day, when you humble yourself and say, Lord, help me. A thousand and one times, we get the fragrance of Christ. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. It makes us into new creatures. So I want to challenge every one of us here today to enter into a new covenant relationship with, with Jesus this year at Easter time. So that when we get to Easter Sunday next week, we have already drunk that cup and eaten that bread of the new covenant. We have already embraced a new us. Forgiven entirely, made new, made clean, praying that the Lord will put to death the things in us that displease him. Don't just go on your merry way because unconfessed sin is not forgiven. But every confessed sin is totally washed clean. So I want to challenge us today to do all of these things and one more. First, get your life completely right with the Lord. Read this little book. Do what it says. Two, seek the Lord about your life that you might receive a new life in Christ that loves the things that are good. Third, I want to challenge you to make room for Jesus in your daily life. This is the key to success. Make room for Jesus. Set apart half an hour for God day by day. Seems ridiculously simple, and yet it's so hard to do. But if you persist, you begin to make room for the Lord day by day. It's the only thing that matters in your whole life. Preparing for that day, we will all meet him. Prepare for the day by sowing to the Spirit. Sowing to the Spirit. Spending time with the Lord. And where should you, where should you read? Clear, clear everything. Turn off your phone, iPod, iPad, laptop, desktop, radio, all your TVs. Sit down in your favorite chair. Pick up this book. Turn over to the first page of the New Covenant. The book of Matthew. And read this book yourself. You will be transformed by the power of Jesus' gospel. Now this is what Christianity is all about. Read the gospel and let him work changes into us. Now we start to become Christians indeed, not just in name. Anybody can be a Christian in name. We want to be Christians indeed. So I want to challenge us to make room for the Lord day by day. And this week, as we go into Easter week, set apart some time to examine your heart and to ask the Lord to help you to walk in a way that pleases God. I'm going to lead us in prayer right now. And uh, anyone who would like to pray, please follow me. I'm going to lead us and you follow. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come before you today. I come before you today. I don't want to have the form of Christianity. I don't want to have the form of Christianity. I want to be a Christian. I want to be a Christian. I want to have a new life. I want to have a new life. And I want to be a new covenant Christian. And I want to be a new covenant Christian. Having your laws written on my heart. Having your laws written on my heart. That I might long after the things that are good. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Every sin. Every distraction. Every distraction. And all worldliness. All worldliness. Help me to begin a new life today. 
Be my true Lord, my true love. And I take this challenge to make room for you day by day to read your word and to get to know you better. May my life never be the same after this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand up. We'll sing this last one together.